What's going on, guys? And welcome to Rabbits Used Cars. You know, dealing with collector cars, you meet all types of people. And, you know, you've seen my videos before. You know, how I sold a Camaro to a porn star or, you know, how I sold the monster van to a single mom or something like that. But buying them sometimes, you meet some interesting characters. Uh, meet different people. And like I said, everybody's different. That's part of making the deal. You got to figure them out. And I'm not going to get really, really, really keen on the details of this because I did sell this car and that's nobody's business but, but my own this. But it's an interesting story. You know, I've owned tons of these Tri-5 Classic Chevys over the years. And I mean, I've bought and sold probably 50 of them over the last 15 years. And from, you know, just rust bucket builders to six-figure show cars just like this one. But everybody's got their favorite of the Tri Fives, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, like every guy smokes cigarettes has their brand, you know. So, you know, some people like fives, some people like the sixes, some people like the sevens, just all what you're into. And I love them all. I really do. I, I have a special place with all of them. Um, you know, they're all kind of near and dear to my heart. These cars are just iconic. And they're always that staple car that no matter what the, the collector car market's doing, these cars always do well you know they're always popular whether they're original or resto mods or wild customs or station wagons or whatever i mean now we're even starting to see the four-door hardtop cars start to jump up in value so i mean they're really just gone full circle with these cars but like i said back to meeting some interesting people that own these cars so i set out a few years back that I wanted to find a Tri-5 Chevrolet for myself. And you know, you gotta understand, I buy and sell a lot of cars, but I also have my cars, my personal cars. They're, they're my babies, you know, like my 72 GMC, or, you know, just stuff like that, like, like the white vet. Those cars are, are kind of like my personal toys. I mean, and when I want something different, you know, I may rotate the stock a little bit, sell them off, get something else. Well, I wanted a Tri-5 car. And, and a specific Tri-5 car. And, you know, so I saw it out looking for it. It never fails. You know, you got a pocket full of cash and you're looking for something and you can't find what you're looking for. And, you know, everyone you look at, it's nice, but not exactly what you wanted. You know, and, and like I said, you know, everybody's got a style and I got a certain look with these cars I like. And, you know, I've seen some original cars that, that, that were nice, but I was going to do a lot of work to get them to the to the hot rod level I wanted to. And then some were hot rod a little too much. I love the old school vibe, carved engines, four speeds, things like that. And just finding a really nice, solid car. So I looked, 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 and I put some feelers out and and you know, got you know, I've got several friends in the car circles and I told them, hey, I'm looking for this blah 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 tri five Chevrolet. Just keep your eyes open. You know, it's a certain car and so long story short, you know, I get a phone call from a buddy of mine. He says, well, you know what you're looking for? This guy has got one with the coolest story ever attached to it. I'm a sucker for a story. So I go to meet the guy, pull into a small town, South Carolina, very small town, literally a bump in the road, and pull up to a nicer house with a detached two-car garage. I pull in the driveway and, you know, there's an Acura sitting there. And you can tell a lot about people by their daily. And there's like an Acura SUV sitting there. Not, didn't really look like old car people, but hey, knocked on the door. And guy, well-dressed, you know, looked like he was a businessman, maybe a banker. I don't know what he did, but, you know, I'm pretty sure he wasn't cutting grass for a living. And he is, I said, I heard you got a nice 56 Chevrolet. He said, yes, sir. He said, let me show it to you. So we walk out to the detached garage and he opens the garage door and there sits this gorgeous Chevy. Literally what I imagined what I wanted was sitting there covered in dust. And I saw this car and, you know, I looked inside it and, you know, it had the, the, the type interior I liked. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of weird when it comes to interior styles for these cars. It had the type interior I like. I like the color of it. So we open up and there's this car and, and I'm really trying all I can to not show that I'm overly excited about finding this car. You know, you got to have your game face on. And this guy, you know, real soft spoken, walking around the car and he goes, I'm pretty sure it won't start. 
I said, no big deal, you know, so we opened the hood and looked, and, you know, it's kind of an old school vibe over the hood, and started looking at it, and I mean, the car's just rock solid, and I said, tell me about it, tell me about your little Chevy. So he proceeds to tell me about it. He goes, well, it's kind of a long story, and I said, hey, I'm all about it. I ain't got nothing but time to kill, and I'm over here drooling over this car. So he starts talking, and next thing you know, I just stop looking at the car, and I'm listening to him. He goes, so... My father went into the military. He got stationed in Oregon. And when they went on leave and long breaks and things like that, they would go down to California, you know, party it up. They're, you know, guys in their early 20s, you know, whatever, you know, hang out, goof off, go to the beach, whatnot. And he goes, my dad saw the first love of his life. He said, there's this sits this classic red and white Chevrolet sitting in front of Harbor Chevrolet in Long Beach, California, which is still there today. When he saw it, he knew two things. One, he was in trouble and he was about to get a new car. So his dad got his very first car and his very first car payment on that day. He drove it back to the base and drove it around base while he was stationed out in Oregon. Drove that car all the way from Oregon back to South Carolina. Met the guy that was telling me the story, met his mother in this car. This guy was picked up from the hospital in this car. Well, somewhere along the mid 60s, you know, old Chevy, old original motor was kind of giving up the ghost and, but he still had this car. And it wasn't even an everyday car then. It was still, it was in the garage. The car never sat outside. It always sat in the garage. Even when he was on base, it actually sat under a carport. The car never sat out in the weather. And he said, I can only think probably on one hand the times it's ever gotten wet by rain. He said he absolutely loved that car. He said, you see that interior right there? That's the original interior in this car. And you could tell it was weathered, but it was really nice. Just real crisp. The seats weren't all broke down. The vinyl wasn't all pulled apart or ripped. Even the carpet wasn't even frayed in it. And I mean, but it had that old musty smell to it. And so he just keeps telling me the story. And he said, well, they found an engine and a drivetrain out of a Corvette. And he named the junkyard and it was a, a local junkyard to the area. And I've even heard of this place before. And they found this red Corvette and they put the Corvette drivetrain in this classic Chevy and built a hot rod out of it. Made a cool car. And he said, well, you know, a few years later, and decided they were going to paint it. So they ended up painting the car, and the car got painted. And got, and they, they changed the color on it, did a really good job, did the door jams, all that stuff. You know, it had been painted, when I was looking at it, it had been painted for 30 years. And I said, I said, man, that's awesome, you know, and I'm over here just looking at this car. And you got to think California cars are a little different than from cars here on the East Coast or from the Midwest. You know, they had different things, like the bumpers were a little different on them. They had like a, what they call a one-piece bumper on them and just things like that. So your real, your Tri-5 gurus can pick a California car out from a mile away. And this car just just checked all the boxes. It, it sat perfect already. I mean, like literally, like I had to do like two things to it to make it mine and I loved it. So he was telling me about that and I'm like, why are you selling the car? And he goes, personal reasons. Well, you know, I'm not one to pry. And he said, you know, my father passed away. And when he passed away, he said, I'll be honest with you, every time I see this car, it tears my nerves up. And this guy started tearing up at this point. And, you know, I'm close to my dad. And, and you know, I mean, I understand, you know, the love between a father and a son, you know. And and, and so I, I, mean, I feel pain. I mean, my heart went out to him. And he said, every time I see this car, it makes me think of him. And he said, you know, I'll put a battery in it and I tell myself that I'm going to drive it. And he said, every time I sit in it and crank it up, I literally can't back out of the garage with it without just bawling. And he said, I'll be honest with you, I'm having a move and I'm just soon to sell it. I don't even want to take it with me. I would rather somebody enjoy this car. And I'm like, awesome. So, you know, we agreed on a price and it was raining. Came a shower. Welcome to South Carolina. If you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. It'll change. So it started raining. I said, let me go ahead and pay for this thing. And he goes, can you just give me a deposit and come back and get it tomorrow? Because it's raining. And he said, I'll be honest with you, I couldn't stay and see this car. He said, after you get it, it's yours. And I said, I can do that. I can do that. You know, it was another trip back out. But, you know, 
I'm about that. That's fine. You know, so I come back the next day to pay the guy for the car and load it up and whatnot. And he, you know, had the title of the car. And I noticed he had earrings, but it wasn't like, you know, like one like cool rock star earring. Like he had like clip-ons like a grandma would wear. And I kept smelling women's perfume. But we're the only ones there. I'm not here to judge, I'm here to get the car. Shook his hand and you know. We get the car back to the shop and called up my old buddy, because I'm proud of my old Chevy. He came by, he said, you did it. You got it. He said, man, I've known that car for years. He goes, you know why he actually sold it? And he said, he told me personal reasons. He said, yeah, they are pretty personal. He said, he's a cross-dresser. And now keep in mind, I told you he came from a small town. And they said, basically, he was being shamed out of his own town. He couldn't be who he wanted to be there. So he was moving. Who's to say he would have sold the car if he had stayed there? Or, you know, he sold it because he was moving. We don't know. I look at situations like this and, you know, keep in mind, I did stand-up comedy for years. I mean, I got paid to prod and make fun. But then there's sometimes there's lines you just don't cross. You know, at the end of the day, we're all different. We all have different characteristics, just like these old Chevys and Fords and Mopars and whatever else. These cars are a lot like people. They're all a little different. And that's kind of what makes the car hobby great. Just like it's what makes the world interesting. If we were all the same, it'd be a boring place. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. Mm -hmm.